This was the star of the day. I am at Claytor Lake. It's uh, just outside of Radford, Virginia, Pulaski, Virginia. It's a little dammed up lake. Uh, it's part of the New River. I was actually headed uh, to Boone Lake up by Johnson City, Tennessee. It's a long story, but the lake had a leak in the dam. It took them six years to fix it. In a very short period of time, raised the water level by about 20, 25 feet. I was riding up there and I started thinking, wonder how the fish are gonna adapt to all of a sudden the water levels changing that fast. I got behind a guy getting ready to, to launch. He said, it's it's so, it's very, very hard. He said, I haven't seen it like this in years. He said, there was a tournament there last week where one fish was caught and that was who won the tournament. And I was like, you know what? I said, I think I'm gonna head up to Cherokee, which was another hour from there. Tomorrow I would have four hours to drive home. So I went to Holston. I, I don't know. It's just something about that lake. I, I just didn't really want to fish it. It's a great. It's a good lake. It's a lot of big fish in there. So I ended up leaving, and I started heading home, going 81 to 77. And I said maybe I'll find something on the way. And then I saw Clayton Lake, and I, I wanted to fish this, or at least try it. That's where I'm at now. It's about 10 p.m. I'm at the at the. Um, I'm at the ramp, just went through and tied a couple things on. Looks like there's a, a night tournament going on right now. So there's like a million trailers and boats up here. And as far as I know, I should be able to sleep here. I shouldn't be bothered by anybody. And I'll get up early and get on the water and try it. And then I'll just go home tomorrow. There we go. There we go. Dang, man, no time. A two pounder. So the fish are, are aggressively feeding, which is a good thing because you don't have to really try to slow down and finesse them. And they're, uh, they've been very aggressive. I mean, this morning there was, there we go. This morning there were so many fish um, feeding on the top that, uh, I'm like, I'm catching these tiny, tiny fish. Oh, here's the brim. Um, Seem to be some fish that I, I've came through here and caught one earlier. This one little spot up here, and they still seem to be kind of crushing it up here. So, a couple of big explosions every once in a while. So, he passed back through, and let me see if I can uh, maybe I can pick up another one. But fishing a uh, Rapala DT6 seem to be doing a little. Having a little bit of luck. I caught a teeny tiny bass and a teeny little brim. One, oh, about two pounder, I guess. Look at that. 
Oh, it's a dog. Oh my god, some weird shit going on over there. Yeah. I hear you. No luck with top weather this morning. They just, they weren't having it. Um, at this point I lost audio, so I'm gonna go ahead and narrate uh, to make this a little bit uh, interesting. Headed up the lake, main channel of the lake. This little, uh, it's kind of a creek channel I, I went up in and uh, continued with the DT6. No luck, so uh, I decided I would try the um, the football head uh, uh, chatterbait uh, freedom. I tied on a, a, a little otter, a gambler little otter. So the first cast I hooked into a fish and I figured, you know, maybe I'm onto something. Nothing big, but you know, it's good to get bit. The reason that I chose this is because right now I'm in like 30, 25 to 35 feet of water. And so the bank is like maybe even steeper than 45 degrees. So I wanted that thing to kind of drop down, pump it a little, reel it, and then, you know, So I had to go with a different trailer, so I chose the, the Guggenbaits uh, Bandito Bug, so that when the bait was on the fall, um, it, it, it had a little bit more action, a little bit more water displacement, maybe to entice the fish a little bit better. Not too much longer, I um, hooked into another fish. And this was with the full Bandito Bug trailer. I didn't even cut it down at this point. And it was another small one. But definitely now, I know that I'm onto something that's triggering a bite. So this lady on the paddle board scared the crap out of me. I never even saw her. I was so kind of focused on what I was doing. Here. I, th I was thought I'm getting ready to skip him. Sorry, <laughs> I was like, I was headed right to the This was the first fish I lost. A little frustrating, but. Most of the bites seemed to be right in the first few feet of retrieve after after the cast. They were up against the, uh, they were kind of hanging under these low lying branches, I guess, taking in some of the, the shade and and then there was another fish lost. Then I came into a cove. It's a little bit more shallow here. Still getting bit.
So th this was the point that I decided to to cut my uh, to trim my my trailer down a little bit, make the bed a little more compact, maybe uh, increase my hookups. So this was the fourth one in a row that I had lost. I continued down through the uh, through the cove, kind of uh, pitching it up underneath some of the uh, the overhang, some of the cover. It was really really good, and this was a place that I, I kind of wish that I I'd gotten here first thing in the morning. I think it would have been really really hot, uh, but at this point, fishing's starting to to taper down. And uh, I decided to, to scoot up around. Uh, there's some piers up here in docks. Uh, got a little bit of a, a fishing lesson from this young guy here. How you doing? Good. He's giving me How some tips on where the fish are at, how big they are. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah? Oh, really? Big ones or little ones? So I'm further up in this, this creek channel. Again, I'm just not hooking up. And decided to call it a day. All, all in all, I hooked up with a lot of fish. Couldn't get them in the boat, but it's better to get bit than not getting bit and not knowing why you're not getting bit. So we're leaving the boat ramp at Clater Lake. Did okay. Um, I've been wanting to give this lake a try. It's almost 11 o'clock in the morning, and yeah, I had a good day, man. It was cool. The water, you know, I fished a lot of shady covered banks. Didn't fish anything very deep. Had a lot come off. I mean, I hooked up a lot. Probably lost five, probably four in a row, which kind of sucked. But uh, I think what was happening was the bite started was starting to taper down and I just don't think they were committed to taking it. I think that's what it was. I shortened my trailer on the Chatterbait and just didn't uh, didn't seem to help. So that's what I think it was. I think the fish started to get a little bit lethargic, started warming up, boat traffic started to increase, but uh, no big deal. It was fun. Anyway, time to get on home. What up? So, um, just want to talk about a couple things I got back from Clater Lake. I had a decent day. I basically used three things this morning, and I used a Rebel Popar first thing in the morning. There were there were fish hitting the top of the water everywhere, and they were smashing it. They were having nothing to do with top water, uh, any top water plugs or any top water lure. I then went to a Arapala DT6 in um, like a, I don't know if it was a sexy shad color, just, just a natural thread fin shad color. Uh, water was pretty clear, that, that kind of natural color worked. That was what I caught the first fish on. It's about a two pounder. Didn't catch anything very big today. I picked up that one fish on the DT6, made my way out of that cove, and then I went into a, a kind of a long creek channel that went off the main, main lake channel. 20 feet off from the, from the bank, I was probably in like 25, 20 to 30 feet of water pretty much most of the time. I decided to try something that I haven't tried yet. The Chatterbait Freedom CFL. Is it CFL? 
It's a football jig chatterbait. And you can get them in, I think you can get them up to three quarter ounces. But the big deal with me with chatterbaits has always been keeping it lower in the, in the uh, water column. And it seemed like it was always a bait that I needed to, to, uh, to fish shallow water. Yeah. I was using, being it was clear water, the green pumpkin, three quarter ounce. I first put on a Gambler Baits Little Otter. Green pumpkin, I think it's green pumpkin. It's the same color as this jig, whatever you want to call it, whatever Gambler calls it. But um, the good thing about this is you can kind of jig it up and down. You can let it sink and get down in the water column with that three quarter ounce, uh, that football jig head. Well, the football jig gives it a nice wobble. One thing I'll say that it's easy to get the blade engaged. You know, when you first start reeling, sometimes uh, it'll take a crank or two. It was really easy to get going. You could really slow, but I noticed that that little otter wasn't giving it any action on the fall. So if I wanted to lift it and let it fall down and keep it down in the water, um, that wasn't working. So I put on a Guggen uh, Bandito Bug. I don't know what this is. It's kind of a purplish green flake on one side and like a green pumpkin on the other side. But this is what, this is basically what it looks like. But um, really, really effective. I mean, I hooked a lot of fish lost a lot of fish. Now, I don't think it has anything to do with the bait. I did bite off a good chunk of this to try to bring that trailer in more so that it, you know I wasn't, uh, they weren't just grabbing the end and uh, making it a little bit more compact, a little bit more to hook. I'll tell you, I'm pretty pleased. And I'll tell you, the bait keeper on this is really, really good. Well, it, you can look, you can go online and look at the picture. I'm not gonna pull this off because it's really set really now. I'm kind of tear the bait up, but, uh, um, the bandito bug and you know there's a lot of people out there that are hating on the guggen squad whether you like them whether you don't like them they're just a great bait and um i think result speaks for itself i i don't use any of their other baits but i use this one i think it's just a killer killer bait great action so but the main reason i put this on was so when that football jig on the fall the little otter just wasn't it just wasn't given any kick there was the appendages weren't kicking there was no action Plenty of action when the blades engaged, but once you know, once I stopped and let it fall, it was nothing. So I tied this on. This was the the, the star of the day, the Z-Man Freedom Football Jig uh, Chatterbait. Great, I loved it. It creates a, a little more wobble, a little more kick, I think, than the regular Chatterbait. I've thrown that on the uh, on a Veritas Medium, uh, uh, Moderate Fast, seven foot. Maybe a little bit light for this bait. The DT6 I was throwing on a Halo 7.6, medium, heavy, moderate, fast, action crank and rod. This is not the DT6, of course. I tried throwing a deep dive and crank bait. Um, I threw it a few times, but I really didn't fish it. I would go back. I think it's a great lake for, for a smaller you know, lake that you don't hear a lot about. I think the water temperatures were around 81 degrees. They were all largemouth, no spots which is good, and um, I think it's a healthy fishery. I would definitely go back. I don't usually push products, but this football jig, chatterbait, I think it's awesome. It's relatively new, and if you haven't picked one up, throw, put a couple in your boat or your tackle box or whatever. Get out and give it a try. Later.